If you're thinking about moving from Windows to Linux, or maybe even from Mac OS uh, to Linux, or you're a Linux user and you're kind of distro hopping, then two of the distributions you should certainly look at are Linux Mint and MX Linux. In this video, I want to look at those two distributions, compare and contrast, see what the good points are, what the weaknesses are, why you'd pick one over the other. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Linux Mint versus MX Linux is our subject for today. And here is a quick screenshot of both of them. You can see quite a different desktop layout, one with the menu bar on the bottom, one with the menu bar, plus some other interesting icons down the left-hand side. Obviously more to it than that. Let's jump in, starting with uh, Linux Mint to see what that's all about. Now, Linux Mint aims to be a better Ubuntu than Ubuntu itself. Of course, Ubuntu is also a very popular Linux distribution, and Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, and because Ubuntu is also based on Debian, then it is also based on uh, Debian. Now, Linux Mint versions are tied to the long-term support releases of Ubuntu. So, Linux Mint 22.x... Uh, is tied to Ubuntu 24.04 and that's the version we're on at the moment and uh, as you'll see it's supported for a long time until 2029 so if you're looking for something that's going to be stable for the next several years uh, this is a big advantage of Linux Mint. Now Linux Mint comes in three flavors there's the Cinnamon Edition, the XFCE Edition and the Mate Edition, so these are all different desktops that you can get, and we'll talk more about those in a moment. And there's also a Debian Edition, which we'll also talk about. So the Cinnamon Edition is the most popular version of Linux Mint, uh, and it's primarily developed for and by, that Cinnamon is primarily developed for and by Linux Mint. It is a sleek, beautiful, and fully featured desktop. So it's something unique in that sense. You can get it for Linux Mint, and it comes from Linux Mint. Another interesting version is the XFCE version, because it's a lightweight desktop environment. It doesn't support as many features as Cinnamon, but it's lighter and uses less resources. And as you can see, it of course has a slightly different look and feel, but they're applying that Linux Mint theme to all of their versions, you know, with the same background and the same colors and so on. A third version is the Mate Edition. Now, Mate is a classic desktop environment. It is the continuation of GNOME 2, which was Linux Mint's default desktop from uh, 2006 to 2011. So after 2011, they didn't use Mate as the default desktop, but they kept on developing it. So you can still get the Mate Edition, uh, even now after all these years, if that's the path that you want to choose. Again, slightly different, but the theme there is exactly the same. Now there is also the Linux Mint uh, Debian Edition, Linux Mint uh, Debian Edition, uh, its goal is to ensure that Linux Mint would continue to deliver the same user experience if somehow Ubuntu was to disappear. Now, that's quite a big if, but their argument here is that they are uh, developing the technology sufficiently cross-platform, you might say, or sufficiently not so dependent on just Ubuntu that they always make sure there's this Debian version that can run uh, and deliver that similar kind of experience without necessarily relying on Ubuntu itself. Uh, LMDE aims to be as similar as possible to the standard Linux Mint, but without uh, Ubuntu and the package base it's, is Debian itself rather than uh, uh, Ubuntu. As you can see, again, similar type of desktop in terms of theme, but actually now we're built on uh, Debian instead. Now, here's an interesting question that comes into relevance when we start comparing to MX Linux. Uh, from Linux Mint version 20, so that was in 2020, uh, only 64-bit versions are available. And this is a quote from their website. The 32-bit ISO images on prior versions are provided for compatibility with older computers. 32-bit processors are extremely rare nowadays, and most computers are able to run in 64-bit. If your computer was manufactured after 2007, you probably have a 64-bit processor. So they made that decision 2007, quite a while ago now, to provide 64-bit uh, versions only. And as it says, if you've got a PC kind of any time within the last 
for almost 15 years, you know, then it, it's going to be a 64 bit one. Okay, so now let's move over to MX Linux. As you can see, different kind of theme, different kind of layout. Uh, different set of goals really and that's part of the importance when we consider it. MX Linux was born from discussions within the MEPIS Linux community back in 2013 and soon after at Anti-X developers joined the effort contributing their ISO build system that's how you get the DVD the USBs plus their live USB DVD technology and so MX itself is a blend of the first letter from MEPIS and the last letter of uh, anti-x reflecting this part partnership so mx linux is based on debian stable branch and uses xfce as the default desktop so it's the default in this case which means by default it's aiming at uh, lower resource usage compared to let's say linux mint now there are some different flavors there is the xfce edition which is the uh, default it's lightweight and doesn't support as many features as other more full uh, desktops but it's completely usable of course uh, and it's lighter on resources there's also a kde plasma version of course kde is a very well-known uh, desktop advanced desktop you could say for uh, linux with built-in tools like the dolphin uh, file manager extra themes and icon packs and so on so very well known uh, desktop environment uh, and if you want to go with that rather than xfc you can do that with mx linux and there's actually a flux box now xfce is lightweight flux box is kind of ultra lightweight so this edition unites the speed and low resources and elegance of flux box but with the tool set and the ethos of uh, mx linux so if you really are aiming at low-end hardware that's definitely the version to go for. Now there are different uh, XFCE edition downloads available. Um, so you've got four here for the XFCE desktop. You've got the 64-bit version uh, based on uh, the stable kind of Debian. So that's suitable if you've got a PC that's a few years old. There's a 32-bit version uh, available. So you might want to download the underbar 386 uh, kind of the throwback there to 32-bit era. There's also the advanced hardware support version, which has a newer Linux kernel and newer graphic drivers for, you know, things like AMD graphics and, and so on, 64-bit only, of course. And really interesting, there's a Raspberry Pi version. Now, if you'd like to see me do a video about installing MX Linux on the Raspberry Pi, do let me know because that would be that'd be quite an interesting video. But I'd like to know your feedback on that. So there's a Raspberry Pi version as well. So four versions there of the XFCE uh, desktop. But there are also a few more. So there's kind of like seven downloads available in total. You can get the KDE version, that's 64-bit only. And then you can get a 64-bit and a 32-bit version of the Fluxbox uh, variation. So really, as I said, if you're aiming for really low hardware then you want to go for that 386 flux box version that will be the least uh, resource intensive now we have to talk about system d for a moment maybe you've heard about system d here is a kind of a diagram that shows you how system d is all stitched together and the point to notice is it look how many different bits of functionality and things it has to do and that's an interesting point that we're going to talk about. Now, System D is a replacement for init, and it's a more integrated initialization and service manager, enabling, for example, parallel startup operations. So, init is called early on during the Linux boot sequence, after the kind of the kernel's been loaded, after it kind of sets out the memory and the interrupts and all that. Kind of, at some point, it has to start the very first process. This is what's called PID number one, process ID number one the first thing and that's the kind of thing that starts up everything else now the initial init process was quite simple this new system d is more comprehensive and it can do lots of more complicated things uh, and the thing is all those things about the service manager and all that kind of stuff are running now in that very first uh, pid pid one now while system d offers advantages like that including faster boot time and so on its larger footprint and complex configuration files raise concerns about its stability. Do you really want that first process that starts up the whole of your kind of multi-user uh, level Linux running uh, a very complicated piece of software? 
And really, some people think that System D is kind of anti the Unix philosophy. So the Unix philosophy would be like, write programs that can do just one thing, but make it work with other things and make sure that it can handle the kind of the input and the output of text. That's why you might get LS for listing what's in a directory, and then you would pipe it into more, or pipe it into less, or pipe it into grep, or pipe it into word count, and that's the kind of the, the Linux philosophy. Some people say that System D doesn't follow that philosophy. Now, Linux Mint uses System D by default. This is the thing you have to know. If you have strong feelings about this, you have to know that Linux Mint uses System D. MX Linux includes System D by default, but it's not enabled. In fact, MX Linux uses a kind of a System D shim, kind of a wrapper, which emulates some of the System D functionality that are required to get various services up and running, particularly coming back from the Debian and kind of Ubuntu kind of uh, approaches, because they both use uh, System D. Uh, and uh, you've got things like cups and the network manager they can kind of now run by, by kind of using this wrapper over the simpler, older uh, init process. So if you're if this is a thing that you worry about, then here's your choice. If you don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Don't start worrying now. <laughs> it will be OK. So what are my conclusions? You should use Linux Mint if you're switching from Windows or Mac OS. If you like Debian and Ubuntu, but would require even more refinement, even more uh, interesting things, then go with Linux Mint. And if you have a 64-bit CPU, but you don't have much RAM, then of course you can always try Linux Mint XFCE edition. And of course, as I said earlier, you definitely need to have a 64-bit CPU if you're going to go with Linux Mint. With MX Linux, you've got the option that if you have a 32-bit CPU, definitely pick that. Uh, if you don't have much system RAM, then you should definitely go with MX Linux. If you have a particular dislike for System D, then go with uh, MX Linux. And if you prefer lightweight and minimalistic desktops, uh, then go with MX Linux. And uh, if you like KDE and you've got some of those uh, other issues there, you don't like System D, for example, then you can go with the MX Linux KDE edition. So really, with all the different desktops and all the different variations of you know, Cinnamon or XFCE or KDE or 32-bit or 64-bit or System D or not System D. You've got a lot to choose from here. And depending on where you fall in those different preferences of yours, this is how you'll know which of these two uh, distributions to use. Now, if you want to try them out, where should you start? Well, there are four ways to test or try Linux Mint or MX Linux. You can install it directly on a PC. If you've got, uh, if you are sure you of the way forward you want to go, then you just go for it. You can install it. Of course, make sure that you back up all your files. Do understand that you may not have access to Windows if that was your previous operating system on your PC. This, depending on how you do it, and this video won't cover that, but you could end up with just Linux Mint or just MX Linux on your machine and nothing else. So make sure that that PC, you know that you could end up with just Linux on there and nothing else. Don't lose your files in that way. Uh, you could install it on a second PC or a spare PC. That's a good way to try it with no danger of losing that data. And you've got time to play around before you kind of make the final leap. So, you know, you could even maybe buy yourself a, a second hand PC, $50, maybe $75, depending on what you're getting, where you are in the world and so on. Get yourself a second hand PC and give it a go. That's an option. You can install it on a virtual machine. It works very well on Hyper-V or on VirtualBox. That's not going to be an issue. And then you can run that and get used to it that way. And you can actually use it as a live uh, DVD. That means you boot it from a USB drive or even from a DVD drive. Both Linux Mint and MX Linux actually work this way. You first of all boot it up and then you double click on the install icon to actually make it run. But before then, you can actually just boot it up from USB, play around with it. If you actually shut it down, take the USB uh, drive out and reboot, then you'll have your old operating system there. So that's a really interesting way of actually running it on your hardware. See what you think about it, play around with it for a few hours and then shut down and reboot and you've got your old stuff back again. So four different ways you can try here. But as always, do make sure you've got a copy of your files. Don't want anyone losing any data when they try out uh, these versions of Linux. OK, so there you have it. Uh, Linux Mint versus MX Linux. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? OK, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.